World War II has many stories. This short video brings together the stories of the Red Cross, Bomber Command, prisoners of war, and in particular one man, airman, POW, and jazz musician, John Ansell. As we celebrate the centenary of Australian Red Cross, we are reminded of the enormous support given by Red Cross to prisoners of war during World War II. World War II presented many challenges for Red Cross volunteers and services. Volunteers served in 23 countries, as well as on hospital ships and aircraft carriers. Thousands of Australians spend hundreds of hours in Red Cross offices around the country, packing Red Cross parcels, sewing clothes, and processing tracing requests. The Red Cross Tracing and Message Service was one of the busiest services. POWs had a right to communicate with their families, and during 1943 alone, some 230,000 letters were distributed to POW camps. Volunteers and staff also worked in hospitals throughout Australia. Australian Red Cross staff provided assistance to captured and wounded enemy soldiers being treated in military hospitals. One of the main tasks of Red Cross, however, was providing weekly food parcels, clothing, medical and other supplies to Australian prisoners of war. One recipient of those Red Cross supplies was POW John Ansell. John's story is about his love of music and his passion to ensure that music would always be a part of his life. At age 12, John was granted a special residency to attend Canberra Boys Grammar School. He taught himself to play the drums and a fellow student taught him to play a few tunes on the piano. I uh, went to Leeton High School and I used to uh, play in that little three-piece band on the piano. But I did like the drums very much and uh, when I went away to war I did a lot of drumming over there overseas with various little groups that formed in the Air Force and uh, also piano. John was posted to England as a wireless operator with the RAF's Bomber Command. More than 10,000 Australians were sent to Britain to serve as air crew in Bomber Command. John flew with training units at Bournemouth for a time before being assigned to a Lancaster bomber crew with 50 Squadron at RAF base Skellingthorpe in Lincolnshire. Today, a memorial and museum exist on the former Skellingthorpe base. John had completed 16 bombing raids over Germany when on the night of 25th of February 1944, flying as part of a formation of 594 aircraft, his plane was shot down over France. The crew had to bail out and John was wounded, but rescued by the French resistance. Wandering around Germany, uh, France for about three or four days until I was picked up by the French underground and I was looked after there for six or eight weeks. They hid me out and then they got me through to the Spanish border. We crossed the border, crossed the mountains rather, not the border, and we were just coming up to the border when we got caught by the German patrols. So that's when I became a prisoner of war. Red Cross played an essential role in helping to keep the men's spirits and their well-being going during their years as POWs. Red Cross provided an extraordinary range of items of which musical instruments were a favourite. Music was a critical element in relieving the crushing boredom of life in a POW camp. The music in the camp, as far as I was concerned, I was very lucky. I was only in there about three to four months, I suppose, when the Red Cross delivered six piano accordions, a string bass and a, and a guitar, acoustic guitar, and we formed an accordion band. Uh, I'd never played a piano accordion up to then, but I sort of uh, could play the piano, so I, I got one, I was lucky to get one. And then I fiddled around and learned to play the bass on it. So, and then uh, after that, some more instruments arrived, in fact a whole whole band, uh, dance band, uh, saxophones, trumpets, trombones, drum kits, the lot arrived by the Red Cross. John, playing drums, formed a sextet which was very popular with the POWs as they could go from hut to hut, quickly setting up the drum kit and playing. The lively dance music never failed to lift the spirits of the men. John did all the arrangements for his two bands and some of those are recorded in his POW diary given to him by Red Cross. He notes that his accordion band staged its first Hepcat show, Dancing Time, 
on the 23rd of November and it was a huge success. In early January, John formed a rhythm club, Sextet, and performed the show Pantomania, which was again very successful. By January 1945, the liberating Soviet army was advancing and the Nazis began moving POWs deeper into Germany. So began the Long March, and on the 19th of January, John and some 1,500 fellow prisoners were evacuated from their camp and force-marched 240 kilometres across Poland in appalling winter conditions with little food, no medical supplies and just a blanket each for warmth. Not willing to leave his piano accordion behind, John left the camp, pulling it behind him on a sled made from Red Cross boxes, a journey of extreme hardship and malnutrition. But John arrived three weeks later at a camp in Luckenwald, some 50 kilometres south of Berlin. On the 21st of April 1945, exactly one year since his capture, Russian troops liberated his camp and John found himself a free man. Some five weeks later he arrived back in England. By this time the Australian Red Cross had opened the club Craigie's Corner at Summers House Brighton to assist the rehabilitation of RAAF POWs. John was in the care of Red Cross for two months before setting off for home. Red Cross also repaired John's damaged piano accordion during his recuperation and it was with him on the troop ship Orion when he made the six week journey home to Australia. As we know, bomber command crews in World War II suffered an extremely high casualty rate. There were 17 RAAF squadrons formed within the RAF of which eight served with bomber command. These squadrons sustained Australia's highest casualty rates in the Second World War. Over 3,000 were killed in action, 650 died in training accidents. The squadron with the greatest losses, 1,019 men, was 460 Squadron. John's base at Skellingthorpe was located in Lincolnshire, which has long been known as the home of the RAF or Bomber County. Lincolnshire is also home to Lincoln Cathedral, which provided a welcome and sometimes life-saving beacon to returning aircrew. Lincoln Cathedral has been witness to almost the entire history of military flying and is home to the Airmen's Chapel of St Michael and the Bomber Command Memorial. John returned from the war and using the Morse code learned from the Air Force, he got work as a wireless operator with the Electricity Commission. His job took him to Cootamundra and John lost no time in getting back into his beloved jazz. And by 1952, he had formed the hugely successful Kudamandra Jazz Band. It was after hearing some Graham Bell 78s on radio that John decided to teach himself how to play traditional jazz. The band had become a six-piece, and while band members came and went, the popularity of the Kudamandra Jazz Band kept on growing, often playing six or seven nights a week. The band members successfully bid for the 1955 annual Australian Jazz Convention, the first time that the convention was held outside of a capital city. The success was repeated with another convention in Cootamundra in 1959. But uh, it was very successful that first one. Of course it hit the town like a bomb. Yeah, right, yeah. a country town suddenly invaded by all these... All these big, big, there was a beatnik era. Yeah, yeah. And they used to be dancing in the streets in long caftans and long hair and... Um, I don't know. A bit of an eye up there for the locals. Yeah, we used to... The uh, eye opener's right, but it was, it was good. And the second one was just as good. Because yeah. they'd, they'd been to the first and then yeah. definitely came to the second. Yeah. But it's a lot of work. Graham Bell, considered the father of Australian jazz, wrote that without a doubt, the Cootamundra Jazz Band was the best country traditional band Australia has produced. He referred to John as the father of country jazz. The band was disbanded in 1960 when John moved to Wagga Wagga. He formed the Riverina Jazz Band, playing trumpet, valve, trombone and saxophone. John had a stroke in 1980 when he was 58. For the next eight months he sat at the piano every day, teaching himself to play again. Late in 1996 he suffered another stroke during open heart surgery which caused his heart to stop. Four months after his stroke, he managed to take to the stage once more during a special concert in March 1997 to honour his 50 years as a band leader. Organised a, a night 
because it was my, it was 50 years that I've been a band leader, from 47 to 97. I didn't know anything about it. Down at Romano's Hotel, I'm sitting there. I'd been in there for about 10 minutes, if that. And Cheryl said, look who's coming down the aisle. And I looked around and here's Graham Bell walking down the aisle. See, he'd come. I just broke down. I just couldn't. And I, when, I, when I saw Graham, I said, oh my God, it's God coming up the aisle. Oh, that was a great night. Yeah, 17th of March. That's the highlight of my career. The Riverina Jazz Band stayed together until John's passing in December 1998 at the age of 76. In recognition of his enormous community spirit, John was honoured with a plaque in Wagga Wagga's Walk of Honour.